Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good and happy Sunday. So I want to come on here and do an update on the whole Botham Jeans situation. So as you guys all know, I did the podcast the other day. And when I tell you, honey, plenty of y'all Christians were upset. Now let me go ahead and say this first and foremost, okay? I have no issues with anybody's religion. Half my family's Christian, the other half, you know what I'm saying, practices Islam. My mother is Muslim. Y'all know this, this has been said plenty of times on this channel, okay? Now what I found really funny is how many so-called Christians chose to attack me off of my Botham Jean podcast where I was not feeling what the brother did, the daddy did, you know what I'm saying, the, the police officer, nor the judge. I thought it was tacky, it was uncalled for, and they made Amber Geiger look like she was the damn victim. You got the brother up there crying, can I please just hug her? Somebody needs to turn that into a damn gif or a meme or something. Turn it into a damn remix. Can I please hug her? Can I please hug her? Can I, can I, can I, can I? I can I just please hug her? I mean, damn. All that begging he did, and now we got some more shit coming down the pipeline, okay? But first and foremost, let me go ahead and say this. Because one thing I noticed, a lot of you Christians like to say, I'm going to be praying for you. Y'all want to call me evil, condemn me to hell. I'll be praying for your soul. Let me explain to each and every last one of y'all who left those comments talking about you're going to be praying for me because I'm wrong for not forgiving Amber Geiger. I had to pull out the damn brush on y'all. Keep your damn prayers, okay? Don't pray for me. Pray for your damn self, okay? Because I don't accept prayers from any and everybody, okay? I'm prayed up, I'm blessed, and I'm highly favored, and I don't need nobody who's going to tell me that I'm evil or who's condemning me to hell to pray for my soul. Pray for your own damn soul, okay? How about that? You know, y'all kill me with the bullshit. I don't know where your prayers are coming from. They could be of God or they could be of the devil. So I don't need your prayers, bitch. Pray for your damn self. I said what I said, don't like it, get the hell off my channel. I do not forgive Amber Geiger. I don't agree with what both of Jean's brother did, his father did, what the, the, the court police officer did, and especially what the judge who's supposed to be impartial. I don't agree with what she did at all, okay? And I said what I said and I stand by what the hell I said. Damn it, you throw this damn brush at y'all. Keep your damn prayers and leave me the hell alone, okay? I'ma speak my truth and if you don't like it, this ain't the channel for you, okay? This isn't a religious channel and I'm not here to kumbaya with none of y'all, okay? I'm here to speak my truth as I see it and I see a lot of messed up stuff in this case and the fact that Joshua Brown has now been found dead as of this past Friday is not sitting well with my spirit at all. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about it and I'ma break everything down for y'all cause y'all know that's what I do here. So this entire situation concerning Joshua Brown is just extremely disturbing and really sad. Now what's even more disturbing is that Amber Geiger was basically um, charged, found guilty, sentenced to 10 years. And I said in my podcast that the way these people were moving and the things they were doing in the courtroom, they're going to make it a lot easier for her to submit her appeal and be able to get out in less than five years, okay? You got the brother talking about he don't want to see her in jail. You got the damn daddy talking about he wants to be friends with her when she gets out. Just all this goofy, mush mouth, kumbaya bullshit, okay? So now, we have found out that this past Friday, one of the main witnesses, okay, his testimony was very, very important to that trial, he has been found dead. He was shot several times, but the most important thing is that one of the bullets at point blank range hit him in the mouth. And a lot of times when people are hit in the mouth, they do that to stop people from talking or because they think they're a snitch and stuff like that. So this situation with Joshua Brown is just really, really sad. I'm gonna go ahead and read to you guys this article and play you guys this news clip. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So they're saying both them Jean's neighbor who testified against Amber Geiger, the Dallas cop who gunned BJ down in his apartment, has been killed days after the guilty verdict. Joshua Brown was discovered Friday night in Dallas after what appears to be a drive-by shooting. According to local reports, officers reportedly found Joshua on the ground with multiple gunshot wounds at an apartment complex in Turtle Creek. Eyewitnesses told the police they saw a silver four-door sedan speeding through the parking lot of the complex after the shots rang out. No suspects or motives have been identified as of yet. An attorney for both of Jean's family confirmed on Facebook that it was, in fact, Joshua, and he died from multiple injuries at the hospital. 
Of course, Joshua's death has come less than a week after Amber herself was found guilty of murdering both of them in 2018 when she entered his unit, supposedly thinking it was hers. She got 10 years in prison for it, but was forgiven by both of them's brother. Weeks earlier, Joshua testified about how he saw and heard that night, saying he never heard Amber shot any command that a police officer would normally shot at a suspect. Some people have taken to social media in their outrage at Joshua's killing, with some calling it a retaliation, revenge, and even an assassination. None of that has been proven, but folks are running with it. The Dallas PD is currently investigating. I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys a clip of Josh speaking during the trial, and then also the news video, so y'all go ahead and check this out, and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my comments. We can take a moment, uh, Joshua. This is fine. We're not in a rush, okay? Yeah, we need a moment. In the murder trial watched by millions, Joshua Brown, one of the few able to describe the moments before Amber Geiger shot and killed their neighbor, Botham John. How soon after the divorces did you hear the sounds of gunshots? Right after. Right after? Right after. It was right after. quick? Quick. That scene in the courtroom making this scene Friday night even more tragic and suspicious. Police scouring a second Dallas apartment complex after someone shot Brown multiple times and drove off. Witnesses reported a silver sedan speeding out of a parking lot. Soon after, in a nearby hospital, Joshua Brown was pronounced dead. The shooting in the Atera apartments, six miles from where Brown lived last year, when he heard the fatal gunshots fired by the former Dallas officer, killing both him John. When Brown took the stand just last week, his testimony was credited in Geiger's conviction. Do you recall uh, ever hearing someone say, hey, put your hands up in a loud tone? No, no, ma'am. Or show me your hands? No, ma'am. Upon hearing of his death, the Dallas County prosecutor wrote, he bravely came forward to testify when others wouldn't, adding, if we had more people like him, we would have a better world. As questions swirl about the motive in Brown's death, the attorney representing John's family calling for action, tweeting today, I just spoke with Joshua Brown's mother. She is devastated. We need answers. Tonight, police say there are no suspects in Brown's death and the investigation is ongoing, leaving a new family calling for justice in Dallas. I can't say I seen him. I heard him in there. Okay, when you Literally. say you heard him, what did you mean? Heard him singing every morning. Okay, you heard him singing. Uh, what kind of things did you hear him sing? Uh, gospel music, uh, Drake. And your door is directly across the hall from where Mr. Jones' apartment was, correct? Yes, ma'am. And so in the mornings, were you inside of your apartment when you heard Mr. Jones singing or outside of your apartment? Uh, I'll probably hear him when I come out, lock my door. I'll hear him. Okay. So from in the hallway, you can hear his activities inside his apartment? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. You have to say it out loud. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Now approach your honor. Yes. Here. Thank you. Honey. All right, so you guys just watched that news article. So a lot of things with this case is just not sitting well with me. At this point, I feel like this case is an entire psyops, okay? They're trying to drum this whole story of forgiveness and the brother and the family forgiving Amber. So that way she can get out on appeal. And if you guys don't know, they literally submitted her appeal not even a few days ago. So they are working on getting Amber Geiger out per the request of the brother who doesn't want to see her in jail, okay? I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't going to ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but... I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. There was another eyewitness in the case, a woman, and she initially filmed right after the shooting. From what I'm hearing, because I have not watched the video, I cannot find the video. The video has been scrubbed off the internet from what I feel, because I cannot find it at all. But from what I'm told, the woman has audio and video footage of supposedly Amber Geiger and both of them arguing, is from what I'm hearing. But I haven't watched it, so it can't be confirmed, okay? And I can't find it. But I always have felt wholeheartedly that both them, Jean and Amber Geiger knew each other. 
I don't know if they was fucking or not, but I definitely feel like they knew each other. They lived right above from each other. You figure both of them was cool with the neighbor right across from him. He had a lot of white friends and things like that. So I don't see why he would have any problem talking to her or striking up, you know, any type of conversation or even a possible relationship. And the reason why I feel like there was more to the story and that they might have been some type of relationship or friendship between Amber and um, both of them, Jean, is how the brother and the father acted during the trial. For him to want to hug a supposed stranger that took his brother out, to me, it's not about forgiveness. It just does not make sense. It's one thing to forgive, but I can forgive at a distance, okay? Because when you hug people, that's a transfer of energy. And I'm very big on energy. And if your energy is foul, I'm not trying to be around you. I'm not trying to fool with you. And you damn shame about to put your hands, your essence, or nothing of you on me. Period, point blank. So something about this whole situation is just very strange, the way it's playing out. And now that Joshua has, you know, been found dead and, you know, shot in the mouth, that just does not sit well with me. I feel like there's a lot of things being covered up because, again, if you start to peel back the, the onion, it may have the Dallas Police Department looking really bad. So this entire case to me just is not sitting well with me. It makes no sense whatsoever. From the time this case first came out, and Amber Geiger was saying that she walked into the wrong apartment. She thought it was hers. But if you guys do not know, both them Jean had a red mat on the floor. So now let's say that she's a police officer and she's coming to respond to like, you know, a burglary or something bad that's going on inside the apartment. Amber Geiger is right-handed. So as soon as you're getting ready to enter the apartment, she would have used her left hand. Her right hand would have been on the gun. And as a trained officer, she would look down at the ground. She would look at her surroundings. So she would have looked down and seen that it was a red mat on the floor, that she did not own a red mat, that ding, 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 it's not her damn place. I mean, like, why would I use common sense? People come at me and say that I'm mean and I'm evil and because I don't want to forgive this woman. Her story has been bullshit from day one. Point blank, period. Pardon me, but that's bullshit. Now, y'all can say I'm a conspiracy theorist. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can say I'm always reaching. My arms must hurt so much from reaching. But I don't care what anybody says. I feel like Amber Geiger and both them Jean had a relationship, okay? First of all, let's keep it real. Amber Geiger was a hoe. Just like I would call any of these celebrities, reality TV show people. She was smashing a married cop. She was smashing. So that means she's a side chick to a married cop. And after she killed both of them, Jean, she was still sending nudes to that married cop. So that says a lot about her character. I feel like her and both of them, Jean, has some type of relationship mainly sexual. I'm going to keep it real. She lived right upstairs. Both of them, Jean, mainly ran with, you know, white folks. He mainly dated white women. And that's fine. Date who you want to date. But I have to point that out because just because she's white and he's black does not mean that there was an attraction and that they weren't dating or messing around. Okay. I feel like she might've been upset because her married boo was not going to leave his wife. And probably both of them, Jean, was just, you know, was just sex to him. It wasn't like he's trying to wife her or really be with her. And she felt some type of way and she took it out on him. Because, again, this is not some apartment complex in the hood. Okay, all these people were living in a very well-to-do area. The rent on the apartment is anywhere from $1,500 to $2,485 a month. So these were not apartments in the hood somewhere. Okay, I've stayed in a lot of damn Airbnbs. And I only stay in high-end Airbnbs. I don't play that shit. And most of the Airbnbs I stay in, they give you a key fob, okay? Meaning that those apartments cost money for you to stay in them, okay? Those condos and apartments, they give you a key fob. When you open the door with the key fob, you drag all your luggage in, guess what? As soon as everything's in the house, boom, the door slams shut. The only thing that would hold that door ajar is if you put like a door stopper or a suitcase in the door, so there's no way these type of doors can be held ajar because then that would, you know, affect security. And if I'm paying three grand a month for um, an apartment or a condo, that damn door better slam behind me. There shouldn't be nothing ajar. We're not living in the damn projects, okay? So let's use common sense here. I feel like she had a key fob to get in because when you use the wrong key fob to try and get into somebody's apartment, guess what? It won't open. It's no different than using a physical key. If I take my house key and I try to go into your house, guess what? It's not going to unlock. The only way that Amber Geiger could have got into that apartment to surprise both them Jean is if she had a key fob.
Then you have to ask yourself, well, well you know, Miss Amber, where did you get this key fob from? Unless she got it from the apartment building themselves, which I'm sure they don't want to risk a lawsuit by handing out people's, you know, key fobs that they're paying three grand a month for in this apartment to random people in the apartment. I believe both them Jean gave her that key fob. I believe her and both them Jean has some type of relationship. Y'all can get mad. Y'all can get offended by my theory. It is what it is. And what really solidified that there had to be some type of relationship, some type of connection was the behavior of the father and the brother. When the father is sitting here on the witness stand saying that he still wants to be friends with Amber when she gets out, when the brother is saying, can I please give her a hug? I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. That both of them would want you to do. That both of them would want you to do. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. <laughs> and the judge is okay in it? There's something there. There was some type of relationship. These people had to have known Amber or known of Amber for them to feel the sympathy that they had for her, which to me makes absolutely no sense. And y'all can say, well, it's the Christian thing to do to forgive and everything else. But so it's OK for y'all to defend them hugging this murderer of their you know, relative. But when I say, no, I, I don't feel that I'm the bad one. I'm being condemned like that doesn't make any sense. So y'all are showing more forgiveness for a murderer who killed an innocent person who did nothing to her than somebody who's just stating their opinion. Keep your damn prayers, okay? The whole situation's a hot damn mess. Now, last but not least, I wanna touch on this. I see a lot of folks trying to ruin this young man's reputation. I'm seeing comments in the shade room. I'm seeing comments on TMZ. I'm seeing comments that Joshua Brown was some type of gangbanger, and this could have been retaliation because he was supposedly involved in another drive-by. Bullshit and propaganda, okay? And y'all stop spreading those falsehoods. That man took the witness trial, and I've been around a lot of people, especially hood folks, and you can tell who has, you know what I'm saying, that intelligent thug, hood, you know what I'm saying, type mentality, I don't get that vibe from Joshua Brown. To me, he was just a young black man trying to figure out life. He went to college, got his degree, and he was making good money for himself. He was running his own Airbnb businesses. Like I said, these apartments are not in the hood. They're not in like the lower ward, meaning that Joshua Brown made decent money and chose to live in a decent neighborhood as opposed to living in the hood and things like that. So what we're not gonna do is assassinate this young man's character by saying that he was some type of thug, he was involved in other drive-bys, he was a game banger. That is nothing but propaganda and bullshit to basically make him look bad, to basically have an excuse for his murder. A year ago, they did the same thing to both them Jean. After everything came out, all of a sudden there are all these stories about both them Jean having weed in his apartment. He's a pothead. There was weed found everywhere. And his mother even came on and said they're trying to assassinate her son's character. Jean was laid to rest on yesterday. That same day, police released the findings of a search warrant of his apartment. Among the items seized 10 grams of marijuana. Both of Jean's mother says that information was released to assassinate her son's character. The information received yesterday is to me worse than the call that I got on the morning of Friday, September 7th. To have my son smeared in such a way, I think shows that there are persons who are really nasty, who are really dirty, and are going to cover up for the devil, Amber Geiger. And regardless if he's a pothead or not a pothead, she walked into his apartment while he was sitting down eating ice cream, minding his business. So that has nothing to do with the situation. So be very careful of people writing things in comments and people trying to stir different narratives. Just because it's being written and said on social media does not make it true.
I feel like there's a lot more to his murder. I feel like it was some type of setup. That is to send a signal that you don't testify against certain people. I had to go deep. Y'all can agree, y'all can disagree. You know when it comes down to it, I don't give a damn. I said what I said and I stand by what I said. This entire situation is sad. This dude was the main key witness and now he's dead. And, you know, Amber, like I said, she'll be out fairly soon. She's not going to do the whole 10 years. They've already submitted for her appeal. The, the, the way that the judge, the brother, the father, the, the courtroom police, the way all those people acted are going to help solidify that appeal and help her get out. Like I said, that judge had no business not being impartial. She stepped off of her stand to give Amber a motivational speech. And on top of that, if you guys don't know, on top of hugging her, she also gave Amber Geiger a Bible. So if this is not propaganda, if this is not stuff that's being pushed into the mainstream media to plant seeds in people's heads, then I don't know what else to say to y'all. But to y'all who are aware, I don't want to use the word woke because this is not a, a woke pro-black channel but to y'all who have common sense and see through the bullshit you know what i'm saying like most of my tea sippers do kudos to y'all okay you know this whole situation is just really sad that this young man did the right thing got up there testified and now he's dead and then you have some idiots going around trying to assassinate his character that dude broke down crying for another black man nothing about him screams game banger and doing drive-bys on the side when nobody's looking so again, watch out for some of these comments that are left on like certain websites like TMZ. A lot of those comments are being put there by people trying to create a new narrative, trying to push propaganda. Let's use common sense and stop pushing out propaganda. Let's stop assassinating that young man's character, okay? This entire situation is crazy. I don't want this video to be too long because now I just feel like I'm just ranting. But I'm saying some real shit. So that's why I just let the video just go. And when I get into my mode, I'm going to just keep talking. But now I'm done. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning the death of the key witness in the Botham Jean murder trial. Um, Joshua Brown, how do you guys feel about this situation? Do you guys feel like this entire trial, this entire situation just makes no sense? Everything from how the brother behaved to how the father behaved, the police in the courtroom, the judge, it's like the whole situation just makes no sense whatsoever. And this woman should have definitely got more than 10 years, but she got the 10 years, so it is what it is. But at this point, with Joshua dying, that's not sitting well with me at all. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that notification bell, honey. Okay? And I'm sure this video will be demonetized just like the last one will be demonetized. So if you want to support this content, feel free to hit up my Cash App or Patreon. Thank you guys for all the support and love. I'm going to go ahead and drop some more videos today. So make sure you guys stay tuned. All right. Deuces.